And today, congressional leaders and NOAA officials are raising concerns about how federal cuts could impact the future of hurricane forecasting. Action News Act State and local government reporter Jake Stofan is live from Jack's Beach. Jake, they're blaming staffing and budget cuts. Well, and some of those cuts have already happened, potentially making tracking hurricanes more difficult this hurricane season. But even bigger budget cuts may be on the horizon that experts warn could make it more difficult for the agency to improve forecasting models moving forward. NOAA staffing cuts, a $200 million budget reduction, and the freezing of $400 million intended to upgrade and purchase new hurricane hunting aircraft could make hurricane forecasts less accurate this year. It's going to be really hard to know in advance. Democratic U.S. representatives from Florida and South Carolina joined with current and former NOAA officials to raise the alarm about cuts to the agency. They say staffing reductions earlier this year have reduced the agency's ability to launch weather balloons as often, left Florida facilities understaffed by 20 to 40 percent and cut the number of researchers qualified to fly on hurricane hunting planes in half. And so that's going to be a major obstacle uh, for us staffing that aircraft. Um, and that'll mean likely less airborne Doppler radar data, less drops on support for the National Hurricane Center observations this year. On top of the immediate concerns, Congresswoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz says President Donald Trump's budget proposal would shutter all 12 NOAA research labs across the country as part of a $2.2 billion budget reduction. So if we have a degradation in our ability to forecast intensity and we have a degradation in our ability to impact and shorten the, the timing in which we can notify people, and people are going to die. Those proposed cuts, the group argues, would inhibit any future improvements to forecasting accuracy. The former NOAA officials point to the devastating floods in Texas as evidence there's always room for improvement. Without the research, what we see today will likely become the norm. Now, we did reach out to NOAA asking whether any current or potential future cuts have impacted its ability to respond to storms. We were told the agency doesn't comment on personnel matters and doesn't speculate on what may happen in the future. But a spokesperson did tell us, quote, Rem uh, rem it, the agency remains dedicated to providing timely information, research and resources that serve the American public and ensure our nation's environmental and economic resilience. And Mike and the first alert weather team, regardless of what happens with NOAA, you say this is not going to impact your ability to keep locals here safe during a storm. Exactly. We feel confident in our ability to forecast at this point, Jake. The concern is in the longer range if we continue to see budget cuts. Take a look at the satellite photograph here and you can see this is a high resolution satellite photograph that we have access to right now and it shows nicely this hurricane back in June that was in the East Pacific. But that's supposed to go away by the end of this month and then this is what we have a much lower resolution satellite. So in summary, the concern is for the longer term with NOAA cuts, the true degradation of data and technology. It's like your house. If you let it go for a few years after a while, it starts to become dilapidated, right? A lack of free, vital, and very worthy weather climate enterprise that Jake alluded to and research. That includes radar information that goes to, for example, your cell phone could start to lose that data. The 2024 NOAA budget, folks, it was just 0.2% of the $7.7 .7 billion budget last year. A fraction. That's a tiny amount. It's not too late to reach out to a U.S. representative and U.S. senator to let it be known that maybe this isn't such a good idea. And there's more in the Burrish blog at actionnewsjacks.com at our free First Alert weather app.